tradition. And now the Dawa is public. It's not secretive anymore. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, is inviting now in addition to those early Muslims he is trying to concentrate on the leaders of uh, Mecca and either individually or collectively and he is also trying to bring the da'wah to uh, the other tribes as they visit al Kaaba and as they do their pilgrimage now after the initial reaction of trying to ignore and pretend that this issue will fade away and go by itself the leaders of Mecca little by little start realizing that this is more serious than they thought and <clears throat> they will try with a variety of ways to number one they try to persuade the Prophet ﷺ to give up this new message this new uh, uh, amr or issue as they called it which is making a mockery of their uh, gods, it is making a mockery of their system. That didn't work, then they started putting pressure on the people who are following him. And uh, for those who were poor, who did not have the protection, they got the brunt of that. They, they, and we mentioned last week uh, several stories of how difficult and how uh, severe was the punishment and the torture. It was very much heartless and it did not uh, no any limits to the extent that some early Muslims died because of this torture and we mention of them the uh, Yasir, the father of Ammar and his wife his wife was killed uh, by Abu Jahl he, he just stuck a spear in her heart now with this situation many of the Muslims started becoming restless in a sense not having a weakness in their aqidah but they just uh, the, the torture and the punishment was too much so they will go to the Prophet وسلم, and they will tell him uh, about this the punishment was so severe and I will tell here one particular situation that they will continue to punish and to torture the Muslim until he denounce Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his God and he, then they will say who is your God and their answer that they expected would be Allah and Al-Uzza to the extent that if the, the Muslim was ready if there was a beetle running around and they wanted him to say that this is my God he would say it to that extent was the torture so Khabbab ibn al-Arat who is one of the early Muslims who was uh, on the poor side will go to the Prophet وسلم, and he said uh, that they ask him that at least he can make dua or somehow ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve them from this calamity from this stress so the answer of the Prophet وسلم, was he said قبلكم, the man before you was له في الأرض. they will dig for him a hole in the ground فيجعل فيها and then they will put them put the man down فيجاء بالمنشار فيوضع على رأسه they will bring a saw and they will put it on the head of that man that person فيشق بثنتين and he will be split in two وما يصده ذلك عن دينه and that would not be enough for the man to give up his religion or his faith uh, ويمشط ويمشط بأمشاط الحديد then they will bring combs of, of uh, iron or uh, steel and they will comb his, his meat his flesh of, over from his bone and still وما يصده ذلك عن دينه and that will not move him away from his faith and he said the Prophet وسلم, والله I swear by Allah this, this da'wah, this faith will take hold until the rider will uh, travel from Sana'a in Yemen ila Hadramaut to another city in Yemen and he will fear nobody except Allah and the wolf eating his uh, cattle meaning that there will, this will spread and there will be a, a reign of prosperity and peace but you are asking for this quickly 
meaning be patient and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will get you out of this stressful situation. Uh, as far as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the main, initially, the main emphasis was they, they try to uh, conquer him by argument, by uh, discussion. They couldn't because the faith is so strong and it is so logical. They try to discredit him as he is, and, and again, as I said last time, subhanAllah, we see the history repeating itself. It is the same process. They try to discredit him by saying that he was taught by another person. And we mentioned that there was a, an ironsmith who is from uh, Rome who uh, was living there in Mecca, and they said that he taught him. And of course the answer from Quran is how could he be taught by somebody who doesn't even speak Arabic to uh, come up with such a beautiful thing. Then they would call him a magician, a sorcerer, and they would uh, call him a majnoon and insane. But none of those were enough to persuade him to change his ways, and none of them was enough to persuade those who followed him from changing their mind about following him. So now they, they up their uh, resistance and they up their fight a little bit one more notch and they will try to harm the Prophet sallallahu uh, physically. They wouldn't do that very often and the reason because he was very respected anyhow and being a, a man in his uh, early 50s or mid 40s uh, he had a lot of charisma and presence so not anybody can come and try to attack him physically the only one who could do that was I mean few but one of them was Abu Jahl and uh, th th there is a story about him making a vow that he will come and step he, he said he will come and step on the neck of the prophet as he is praying and the people whom he made the vow to who were standing there waiting for him to go and do what he said he will do and they saw him going where the prophet was praying stopping like maybe a few feet from the prophet and looked like he was scared to death and he came back running and they said what happened why didn't you step on him and he said well as I was coming close to him I saw this huge camel breathing almost fire and about to to bite my head off so I ran away so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him the the other ways that they try to influence him as I said in terms of mocking him uh, they ran out of options and they, they couldn't uh, come up with new ideas especially that they didn't have a well established faith and theology that they can't argue with. So they send a group of them to al Medina to meet with the Jews of the Medina and they told them about this, this new person who is claiming to be a prophet. So the uh, rabbi in al Medina said, uh, well, tell us about him. What is he telling you? What is he instructing you? What is his message? So the more they tell him about his message, those rabbi will say that this fits with our prediction in a Torah that there will be a prophet and that's probably him and they said when you go back to him to Mecca you ask him three questions question number one is you ask them about uh, a group of young boys who some time ago uh, left their hometown and what happened to them the second question would be about a man who travels between the east and the west part of this earth and who has a lot of knowledge and thirdly you would ask him about a ruh about the soul what is it and so when they came to the prophet وسلم, thinking those uh, and they were under the leadership of an another ibn al-harith wa uqba ibn abi muayt they came to him and they said okay now we got you the prophet وسلم, we will ask you three questions and we will see how he will answer because what the rabbi told them if he knows how to answer these questions correctly then indeed he is a prophet and if he doesn't then it means he is an imposter and you don't need to worry about him 
So when they asked him this, the Prophet Sallallahu said, okay, well, come back tomorrow and I will give you the answers. And he forgot Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, insha'Allah. So they come back tomorrow and nothing happened. The Wahi didn't come to him. And the day after and the day after, and like this for 15 days, to the extent now that there was a lot of talk among the people in Mecca that the Prophet ﷺ is unable to respond to those questions and there was a lot of uh, noise and now the situation became kind of critical. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surat Al-Kahf. And as we know in Surat Al-Kahf, he will tell the story of Al-Fitya who believed in Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala and who were met by resistance by their home people, hometown people, and uh, then they had to leave and go to a little cave. And the story, of course, is well known that after 300 years or 309, if you follow the lunar calendar,